Now that you have your unit assembled, comes the most critical part of this whole sander, and that is the setup of your drum height, your drum to the table height. So what you need to do is establish a few things right off the bat. One is you need to be able to take this belt off of the drum so you can adjust it because the belt will hold pressure on the spring. So I'll just show you how to take that belt off. I've already removed my belt card and hopefully you're going to be able to see this. But to take the belt off, you just roll the belt off the pulley just like that. That's all there is to it. And you're just going to let it hang there and now we're going to go and set up the drum to the table. Okay, set up the drum. You need to have the finest grip paper that you have available to you on the drum to set it up. So I'm just going to use the 180 grip. There's 180 grip right here. And I'm going to show you a couple little tricks right while we're doing this. First thing is, you see how it's cut to a point? You don't want it cut to a point. You actually want to cut off square. So just nip this paper back a little bit and cut it off square like right there. With it being cut off square, it allows for more fuzz to be across that edge. The Velcro backing, the hook and the backing, it allows for a, a bigger edge there so you don't have to worry about the paper flying off the ground. So then you're going to roll this paper on. A lot of people ask, do I put it on really tight? Do I put it on really loose? Well, it doesn't really matter. It's on hook and loop. It's only going to go on one way. So you just start rolling it. By the way, that cut edge, that angle that you cut on the, on the paper, goes straight with the end of the drum. So you just start rolling it on. Just stick, stick the paper on right in the end with your finger, and then start rolling it on straight. You're going to come around here. You're going to come up with a gap right here. If you're satisfied with that gap, that's the way it's going to be. But you can't change that. If you try changing that as you go down the drum, the paper's going to wrinkle. I'm not quite satisfied with that gap, so I'm just going to move it a little bit. I'd like to have it a little tighter. See how nice and tight that is right there? So I'm going to just start rolling that paper on. So you just roll that paper on just like that. There you go, the paper's on nice and tight. Now comes the crucial part of this drum sander. And hopefully we're going to be able to show you this. But now we need to set this drum just below the table, so you need a straight edge. I'm going to use this as my straight edge. And I'm going to see if we can turn this on an angle so you can see. See how it's touching in this drum right here? If I held down hard on the straight edge, that drum would roll. This drum with paper on it needs to be below the table. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unlock the end here. I'm going to unlock these two bolts that hold that drum in place. Okay, just loosen them off a little bit. And I'm going to turn this until that drum ends up a little bit below the table. It's a lot easier to bring that drum down than it is to raise that drum up. So I'm just going to see where we are here. So high. Drum still high. We're getting pretty close here. See how I can move this now and I can press down on this but the paper is the drum's not rolling. I'd like to see a little more clearance than that myself. So I'm gonna just turn it a little bit more. See me holding my straight edge on an angle a little bit like that. Because on an angle, you can see a little bit of light through. Now I don't know if you can get a shot at that. But see how there's a little light right through there? That drum is completely below the table. Okay? And a little bit of light. I don't know if we can zoom in on that at all. Okay? But that's what you needed to have. Now that's the one end. That end is set right now. I'm going to lock it into place. 
What's actually going to happen with the sander is when that drum spins so fast, the paper is going to lift off the drum because of the Velcro. I don't know if you can catch a look right here on this crack right here. But you can see when I push the paper back and forth, it moves. It will come off the drum that much too when it spins. So now we've got to set this in. I just want to double check and make sure that the setting is okay here. It's locked into place. We we'll want that thing moving. You can see here, this end is also high. So this has to go down. So you're going to undo these. Start bringing that drum down. Centrifugal force will do the rest. So I'm going to lock that into place. Okay, roll that belt back on the sander. There we go. Just double check it here. That's just below. That's just below. That might be a little low, but we're going to check it out right now. We're actually going to turn the sander on. It's the first time this sander's ever been set, and we're going to see how it works. Okay, we have the sander set up, so now is the time to check it out to see if it's going to work. So this drum is definitely below the table, definitely, it's not touching at all. We're going to turn it on. The drum is going to be spinning towards the user, so the top is turning towards me, just like a table saw blade. hardly taken anything off and a lot of customers get really excited at this point and they're saying oh my this sander is not going to work for me because I'm not removing enough material this is how you change to remove a whole bunch of material at one time do not readjust your drum your drum is perfect I'll show you how to change so you can cut more material you take the paper off and you put on a coarser grip so you take your piece off don't throw it away because you're going to need it. So, if you look at the back of this piece of paper, you can see that's a 180 grit. And I'm switching to a 100 grit. A lot coarser paper, the grit itself is bigger, so it's going to cut more wood off. So, I'm going to re replace this piece of paper. Stick it on again, make it straight. You do not adjust the thing to change your depth of cut, except you change the grit of sandpaper. So you can hear that noise of my the sandpaper going through your my fingers. You don't want to change the sandpaper hundreds of times a day without wearing a pair of gloves putting a piece of tape on your finger because sandpaper does sand and it'll sand skin as good as it sands wood. So, this same piece of wood right here that I just touched a little bit here with the 180 grit and a little bit along this side 
I put a coarser grit paper on here, you'll hear the difference right away. See, I was sanding right through that knot right there, and there's absolutely no loading on the paper because you know that that drum is set below the table, and when it spins, that paper has to lift off the drum, and that air gap will not trap any heat, and that that space in there will keep your sandpaper cool and won't melt the sap and won't melt the paint that normally plugs up sandpaper. Have a great time using your unit. If you bought a Flatmaster with the accessory fits package, these are the parts that come in the box. I'll just show you the quick assembly on these fences. Um, so it's easy, so you don't have to read instructions, you can actually just listen to me. Anyhow, you take the nut right here, you add two washers onto the top. These two washers are going to space it out because when this little shaft goes through the clamp, the stud's not long enough to reach into the side of the table here. So, just add that on like that, line up the hole, put it in loose. That's the whole clamp mechanism right there. Same thing again. Two washers on top of the, the little knob with the stud on it. Put it in, line it up, you're done. Once you have these little clamps on, this whole fence will slide right over, right onto the top of your drum sander. Any top uses the same set of fences. Any of our 18, our 24, or our 30-inch tops uses the same set of fences. The brackets just hang down like that right there. You can see them just hanging down. That fence should just come over top of it just like that. I have to loosen that out. And on they go. Now they're going to fit pretty tight. And you can see right here, when I'm sliding this on, you're going to say, oh my goodness, this fence is going to clamp flat to this table. It's going to sand the bottom of it. Absolutely. You're absolutely right. You're going to sand into your fence. But you only need to sand into it once. Once you've removed the material, it's okay. You've got the notch in the perfect spot. So that's how the fences go on right there. We'll just take it to the next step here of adding the feather wheels and getting it set up to sand panels. In your drum kit, if you bought the optional feather wheels, we're just going to show you how to put these pieces together. There should be four knobs, four bolts, four feather wheels with brackets. This is how these things are installed. You choose the bolt you want to go in, and I usually go fairly close to the drum, and you just stick the bolt through the hole right up close to the top. Okay? Install the, the nut on the back side. Just spin that thing on. Just like that. Let it go. Put them in all four spots. We're going to try to put them all in the exact same spots. 
in the same position on each fence, same position on each side of the drum. Really what you're trying to accomplish here is you're trying to accomplish holding things down tight to this table with a roller system. So you're going to make nice even pressure underneath these rollers in the same position so they're held flat to this table. The table is what everything is going to be positioned off of, so you want everything flat to the table, and you can just see that I installed that now backwards. So we'll just flip that around, put it on the right way here. Okay. So. Set them in a place like that. And then you're going to do some solid feather wheels. Now the feather wheels just slide onto these bolts. They have a little track right here. You see that little track right there? That little head slides right into that track. So you just put them on like that, put them in the position you want, roll them on tight. That's all there is to it. That's going to allow you to slide up and down. It's going to allow you to change your position like this wherever you tighten it. So we'll just kind of tuck them in place here. Then we'll show you how to sand a base panel door. There is a little bit of difficulty with this sander as far as holding things down flat to this table. Anything that's wider than a foot wide or um, longer than three feet or four, uh, longer than actually just two feet, you can't hold even pressure by hand. You need, you need assistance. So that's what these feather wheels do. Okay, now, let's say we're gonna stay on this side of the raised metal door, right here. Now, I don't know if we can get a close-up here on this door. I don't know if we can get it held in a light just right, but you should be able to see some scratches through here. I don't know if the camera's going to show those up at all. But there's some scratches underneath that finish, and that's typical of a standard drum sander. Can you get that light on that just right? Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to push through underneath here. Now, I haven't turned this sander on with these fences before. So what's actually going to happen here is when I tighten these fences down to the table, this sandpaper is going to sand in, into the fences, and I just want to do that before I go into the garden, because then we're going to clamp up the fences in place. So, you can hear the rubbing right there. You can hear the sandpaper rubbing as it's turned on. So when I tighten these into position, you're sanding in? That's okay. Start sanding now. Just setting these fences up into position, setting these wheels into position, you're just going to put the same pressure you would by hand. You can see these feather wheels collapse. So straight down pressure, tighten it. Straight down pressure, tighten it. Same thing all the way around, you want to make sure the wheels line up straight across from each other. Okay. flat. It's high here. It's high here. It's high all across this end. With this sander here, you will sand everything perfectly flat all the time. Everything cuts as flat as the top of that table, so eventually that door will be sanded down perfectly flat. You'll also notice here too, we were sanding through the finish on this door and there's no loading on this paper. With that paper lifted off the drum, that airspace in there, You'll never make heat, so that varnish will just be sanded off. It'll, it won't get warm and get gooey like normal normal sanders react because they're always pushing the paper in. So there's your sander. They're set up, ready to go. Make some raised panel doors, make some dust, have some fun. Well, now it's time to install the motor. Uh, this is what you need to do. First you need to remove this top because it's in the way, so we're going to just flip this whole drum sander right over, 
I'm going to remove the top. I'm going to remove the top because you need to get on the other side of that hole to put the nut in. The other thing while it's here, just to get it out of your way and, and make it easier, is the belt card. You may as well just take that off, that can be put back on after your belt's in place. Sit those. Probably in a spot where I can't find them again, but we'll just sit them off on the side. See what I'm doing here. So you're going to put the four bolts in that you need, and you want to get that motor on fairly straight because you want that belt to line up nice and straight. I'm just going to tighten these bolts up. Inside or your outside flanges line up, make sure that belt's going to travel straight. I'm going to use a link belt on this, so it doesn't matter exactly where that motor's going to go, you want to make sure that set screw is really tight though. Okay. Out of the way. At this point in time, you can see my motor here already has a cord on it. Um, plug it in and it'll it'll work. Um, at this point in time, you can put your switch wherever you want it here. A lot of people install it right in the front of their motor guard. The motor guard is going to go right here. A lot of people will just install it on the bottom of their B-frame or on any of the end brackets. You can put your switch for your motor. So I'm going to put the belt on now. Make sure it's tightened up. And this is a link belt. This, this belt is adjustable to any length you want. I'm just going to feed it up through here. Just going to 
take one of these links out. Now, you want to get this belt fairly close right off the bat, so we're going to take this link out right here. Nope, it's the right one. So you just turn the notch and pull it out. Okay, now, slip it off the bottom pulley. This is going to go together here. So the belt actually goes right through the top, that end link. You lock it through. Make sure you pull it nice and tight. And that second link is going to go through the bottom. Put it through there. Make sure you pull it nice and tight. Turn it inside out. Again, so you can fit into the pulleys. And we'll see how close we are here. So terribly tight here, it will loosen up once you start start torquing it and using it a little bit. So, um, but that's how she fits, just like that there. So we're just going to reinstall the top, clean off our bench here. Move this out of the way. Line up your top, the holes that are already there, the four screws. Take your longer screwdriver and just tighten that one up. I'll just do that right now. At this point in time, you're going to install your belt guard. covered so no one gets hurt. You just put your little screws in here. Flip your drum sander back over. Once that belt guard is installed, you're going to flip that drum sander back over. And you're ready to set it up.